Ulysses, we are what? T minus three days from the Rays start of the regular season. Goosebumps all around, folks. It's getting close. It's getting close. And we have lots to talk about. So let's get started right now. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. And we are the host of the Locked On Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first to listen every day. Be sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Locked On Rays. You can also find us on X and Instagram at Locked On Rays. And email us anytime, LockedOnRays at gmail.com. All right, Ulysses, we have a lot to discuss on this episode. We will be unveiling a handful of our prop bets. Um, But first, uh, we do have some breaking news, somewhat breaking. Uh, Tyler Alexander has made the opening day roster, and he is one of the five men a part of the rotation. Yes, I want to give you props here because uh, when we talked about this last week, you did mention Tyler Alexander made sense because of the lefty um, argument that the the Rays needed a lefty. And then if you are on YouTube, you can see the tweet that Topkins said, uh, Alexander gets the final starter spot in the Rays rotation, though he will pitch in the game four which is against the Blue Jays, possibly behind an opener. So he could be kind of like a bulk guy with Ryan Pepio in game five Monday versus the Rangers. And in other news, Jacob Waggispack, who probably has one of the coolest last name we've ever had as a race player, will open season in the bullpen, likely in a long relief role. There we go. And um, I'm not sure what the decision was behind Alexander Bean. I guess, to start the number four guy versus the number five guy. Maybe it is to break up all those righties with a lefty somewhat smack dab in between that, maybe taking some pressure off of Pepio as the number five starter, although your first start against the Rangers, the defending world champions, doesn't make things uh, too uh, easy there. And it also could be uh, matchup-based as well beyond that. But uh, really good for Tyler Alexander. Again, uh, we'll repeat it over and over. Um, This will not be the same rotation that you see at the end of the year. Yeah, no, it, it's not going to be. I'm trying to think about the Alexander to Blue Jays because that doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, write it down in the comments if it makes sense to you because Tyler Alexander being a lefty and the Blue Jays being so righty heavy, just, you know, Springer. I, like, let's, let's talk about that lineup real quick. Springer, Bichette, Guerrero. Justin Turner, the, their top four is all righties. Who's no, the lefty? Andrew Burke and Danny Jansen. Yeah, that's a good point. Who's the lefty killer there? Kevin Kiermeyer. Yep you you want to you don't want Kevin Kiermeyer to have a major homecoming. You don't want I him do. going off and hitting uh, three bombs in his return to the drop. Does Tyler Alexander have uh, reverse splits? Maybe he's better against yeah. righties than lefties. Maybe I don't know. I haven't looked at deep into it but i'm just you know i'm wondering why the switch between alexander facing a very right-handed lineup and i think some of it too maybe is i'm not sure if alexander is penciled in to go four five six innings right out the gate maybe he's just going to be used as a a bullpen season and then it's it's a um glorified bullpen day maybe oh yeah you you squeeze in a left lefty go through the lineup once and then Give all those all those guys in the Blue Jays lineup a different look, second, third, fourth time through the order. So there might be something there. So okay. um, all right. Uh, we do have a lot more to discuss. We want to hit our prop bets, which I should preface this if you're relatively new to the program, Ulysses and I, each season and sometimes Klosky and others, we throw out various um, scenarios, stat based. Is this gonna happen? Is that gonna happen over under? Yes or no? And then whoever racks up the most correct answers at the end of the season gets a little prize gets a little gift um i think in previous years if i would win i don't know if i've ever won actually uh you would buy me a cigar or a couple cigars and if you won 
uh, I think we've both had had whatever it may be. So it's a, you know, a a nice friendly gentleman wager of, you know, 25 bucks, something like that. You know, maybe it's uh, buying the other person a ticket to a raised ball game. You know, I don't think that's too out of the way. We've never done that actually. Yeah. That's a good idea. Um, But now the prop bets that we bring up, sometimes we agree upon them, which means we can't really do, uh, you know, it's 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 just a, a fun thing to talk about, and then we have to come up with more prop bets. But at the end of the day, by season's end, we should have an, I guess, an odd number of prop bets or, or an odd number of selections uh, to where you know there will be a winner at the end of the day. I guess that's that's correct. Uh, I just wanted to take a look at his splits real quick on Tyler Alexander. They're very similar against lefties and righties. He's very similar against average. Slugging is a little bit higher against lefties, but in that was in 2023. But in his career, it's it's overwhelmingly uh, he's way better, as you would expect, against lefties. So the question remains, Kevin Cash, call in. Neander, call in the show. Let's talk about this. Uh, we we, we, we want to know what, what you guys think, you know? 1-800-GO-RAYS. I don't know if that number works out. Something there you like go. That. So, um, or maybe the the Blue Jays are less intimidating of a righty lineup versus the Rangers. Um, I'm sure there's a, a lot of multitude of reasons that uh, go behind it. But uh, before we move on, Ulysses, we have to tell the audience something very important. That's right. And, you know, that is a pri- price picks, which is just the right time to download it because guess what? Conference tournaments are here which means the biggest moments in college basketball are getting closer. Be a part of the action on price picks for both men's and women's college basketball. It seems like every time you turn on the TV, there is a college basketball going on. So it's the perfect time for that. But you know what? You might be saying to yourself, I'm not really into college basketball. That's okay because they've got baseball too. And guess what? I have a few here. Randy Rosarena uh, having over 148 hits a season. Or Zach Eflin having more than two uh, 10 strikeout games. You could do that by using price picks. So today, guess what? Don't delay. Download the app today and use code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That is fantastic. So again, download the app today. Use code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Okay, uh, getting into some of the prop bets here. Uh, Ulysses, do you want to start it off with one of yours, or do you want me to uh, throw you one of mine first? Throw me, throw me one of, uh, of yours first, please. All right, my, uh, my first scenario, and the listeners can play along at home, uh, what they think in the YouTube comments, or email us directly, lockdownrays at gmail.com. Um, first one, first question. One race starter, at least one race starter, will get to at least 180 innings this season. Hmm. Yes or no? 180 innings. Oh, boy. It's if you think, not that you want, because obviously we all want that to be a yes. But do I think 180? You know what? I th- I think so. Okay. But it's not the guy... But it's, it's not, not the guy. Zach Eflin. It's you not Zach. It's Zach Eflin. Wow. Okay. It's That's why I left it open ended. Yeah. Uh, I think it's Littell. Littell gives 180. Okay. And you know why? Because it seems like if you look at his uh, game log last year, they didn't care uh, about his pitch count. I don't I, like they, they just, and it's not like he was getting into like 120 or anything like yeah. that, but. He was actually very efficient with his pitch count, um, but they let they let him go a lot, like you know seven eight innings uh, quite a few times. So if there's a guy that I would I would bet that he could do that would be Latell. Like if you look at his game log from August until September, six innings, six innings, five and two thirds, five and a third, six innings, eight innings, seven innings. I'll go. Yeah, I'm gonna say okay. yes. I guess uh, Zach Littell is your new Alex Cobb. That's your new boy toy. No, 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 no. Calling for Zach Littell. 
please let's 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 keep things in perspective. Yeah. Alex Cobb, nobody touches the Cobber. Okay, yeah. nobody. And maybe some of it is, you know, Latell is not a a prize prospect. He's not Cobb. It's just like, hey, let's roll out the string on him. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people would say. If they said yes, it would be Zach Eflin to be the guy because he did have 177 and two-thirds innings across 31 starts last year. But should note that over his career, he's had a lot of ups and downs as far as health and innings contributions. His most previously was 163. I say all that to say no, I don't think. I think they'll have at least a guy that gets close-ish, you know, maybe – 165 to 170 but um it, it's really year by year on whether the the Rays or, or any um team out there is going to have a race or is going to have a starter that gets to that many i mean previously it was you know shane mcclanahan at 160 plus innings yarbrough at 155 I mean, the last time this was done was in 2019 with charlie morton uh firing off 194 innings although he had never reached that mark until joining the Rays. And then before that, you had a lot more with Blake Snell getting 180 and then Chris Archer uh, in 2017 with 201 with Alex Cobb very close uh, that year behind him at like 179. But I will uh, I will take the under here. I think you're correct in taking the under, not okay. not lying. I think but, no, great. that'll be a fun one. So we'll have to put that on the board, put that on the list and uh, see yeah. uh, how it uh, shakes out at the end of the year. So, all right. Uh, now, what do you have? Throw us one of your uh, prop bets. Randy Arozarena, over, under, 25 and a half home runs. That half is what gets me. I think he can get to 25. He's never gotten to that in his career. I think the most in his career is 23, correct? Yeah. I, I mean, so. I just – I unless it was a – uh, a contract year, perhaps. Um, I still see him as steady Eddie. You're going to have a 262 70 batting average with, you know, 22 home runs and 22 stolen bases and uh, 30 doubles, whatever the the metric is there. Um, and I think some of it depends on uh, the help or assistance he has around him. Like if Brandon Lau is healthy or not healthy, how does that affect? randy's approach um right. wander franco out of the equation do teams um you know the same thing with Lau is like i think a lot of it is how teams will approach randy and what randy thinks he has to do to contribute to the team this season but i will go under i will take no on that one i think it's a sensible option i can't convince you even if uh i show you pictures of him bulked up for the 2024 season being as big as we have ever seen randy well, then we then we have the risk i know he's he's ready to play 150 plus games every year but you know when you're when you're bulky, bulky like that and you're running around at the trop turf uh your, things can get messy hamstring can happen uh hip strain yeah uh, it, before you know it, he's he's out for 30, 40 games. So that almost expedites my reason to say say the under. Um, having said that, I, I do understand under the hood, his batted ball um, data is excellent. Like, I, I think that it also just like, I mean, he's got the power to hit it out of anywhere. But I think the trop kind of limits him with a couple home runs as well. Yeah. Perhaps. So um, I am, uh, I'm dying on this hill. He will not get to uh, 26. I've it was it's funny I've been kind of like oh yeah Kevin's right you know that that line was too high 25 and a half but if you look at his home, home runs he's gone from 20 to 20 to 23 and let's be honest folks in 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 the second half he was a whole different type of ball player uh than he was in the first half and not in a good way um I, really there there's just the um, the the power production after the the all-star game after the home run derby just went down completely in the first half he had 16 home runs 16 already then he had just seven in the second half and he still got to 23 so i'm i'm hoping for kind of the same production except for the fact that he's not going to have a horrible second half um so what you're saying is he should not uh compete in the home run derby I've never, 
I, ever since I saw what happened to Bobby Abreu's power production post home uh, home run derby um, participation, I, I think it does something too. I know that people say, "Oh, it changes your swing." Maybe that's not it, but the mentality does. And also, it's a grueling event. It's a grueling event. It doesn't look like it when we're just eating Cheetos on our couch, right? And 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 nachos with cheese. It doesn't look like it. But it is. It's yeah. a lot of torque. It's a lot of stamina. It's it's it gets to your body. Like imagine taking that many hacks, that hitting that ball that hard for basically a couple hours. Yeah. Just nonstop. It's crazy. Right. And I think also maybe the the adrenaline and the letdown after that. I don't know. I can't recall exactly who the Rays were playing and where, but where you are the center of attention on national television. Uh, in the home run derby, everybody's talking about you, reading about you, watching you, and then it it it's just like regular life again of baseball. And you just don't have that break where most guys um, relish in the fact that they're going to get a handful of days off in the middle of the season or a little past the middle of the season. It's just you just never have that breather. I think that that kind yeah. of eats upon itself from there. And now I don't know if it's if it ties into um, participating in the home run derby, but his doubles numbers were like half of what they've been in previous years. He had 32 and 21, 41 and 22, and just 19 and 23. And usually doubles are a good indicator of more power. So I don't yeah. know what the reasoning is behind all that. I'd have to look at the numbers a little closer, but that might be something more in favor for me, but also it could just be the the fact of um, he was tired. <laughs> Uh, in the second half of the season. And I will uh, – the last thing I'll say about it, Randy here, he now has the the benefit. We know that he likes the spotlight. We know that he likes to be the guy in the moment. Guess what? If you had to pick a uh, face of the franchise for the Rays right now, who would it be? Let's be honest here. Don't – everybody can tell – oh, come in. It's Randy Rose right now. It's Randy Rosarena. Don't give me McClanahan. Don't give me Zach. It's Randy Rosarena. Yeah. He likes that. He enjoys that. And guess what? This is the first time that it's undisputable. Yeah. You cannot give me any other argument for any other player. It's Randy. And he knows that. And guess right. what? He likes that. So I'm going over. You know who else likes that? Scott Boris. Because that's the <laughs> yeah. power. That's right. That's right. Um, all right. We have more prop bets to get to, but first we have to tell you this. Say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins it's pretty good stuff right there again that's 200 bucks to use on point spreads money lines and so much more you can even pick who's going to win it all so all you have to do is this just visit fanduel.com slash locked on l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets i'll repeat it one more time fanduel.com slash locked on l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n Okay, uh, my next prop point here is this. Will the Rays set a franchise record in team stolen bases this year? They set the mark, I believe, last year with 194. So they would need 195 this year um, to set the mark again, I guess. So... Yes or no? Does that happen or does that not happen in 2024? That's tough because I think what you need to look at first is the additions. Like who is getting added into this, you know, um, into the team mm -hmm. that could possibly help with that? And from what I'm seeing here, it doesn't seem like a lot of speed is entering um, the the roster, really. Um, so that doesn't 
look too good. Um, and then when I see the people that are leaving, I mean, the guy who had the second most was Wander Franco with 30. Um, Taylor Walls is fourth. He had 22, and he's not starting this, this season healthy. Luke Rayley was fifth. Fifth. Nobody would have ever said Luke Rayley was fifth, by the way. Um, with 14, he's gone. Manny Margot, seventh with nine. Gone. Um, even Vidal Brujan had three. Even Raimel Tapia had two. Even Christian Bethencourt had one. Um, I don't see any of these names being replaced with speedsters. Um, Johnny DeLuca could be a guy. Guess what? He's hurt. Um, Josh Lowe, who was at the top of the list, he's hurt for a little bit. I don't see influx of speed for these guys. So I'm going to go with no. They are not going to set a franchise record this year of stolen bases. Okay. I like your arguments, and um, I'm just going to shoot from the hip and say they do. Somehow, some way, they figure it out. We'll pencil in 20 to 27 from Randy. Josh Lowe should still get his 25. I think a big change could be Jose Siri getting a lot more stolen bases this year, assuming he's able to get on base a little bit. But um, For your argument, I would yeah. say Caballero could yeah. be a surprising 20. I think, uh, I think back Caballero, because, yes, it is jarring that you're taking Wander out of the equation. Because just think if he was here and he was able to play a full year, like that's <laughs> five stolen bases probably. Um, yeah. So no Wander, no Rayleigh, no Margot, some others as well. But – and maybe they do in order to get this number, they have to have somebody go off with like 40 to 50. They needed a, you know, a Greg Jones in the lineup every day, which yeah, you know, it wasn't going to happen, but I think they can maybe piecemeal it between Randy Lowe, Siri Caballero. And then I see 15 from Rosario, 15 from DeLuca, 10 from Palacios, some other guys penciling in there. I gotta, I'd have to add up the numbers, but just for argument's sake, I will say yes. And maybe the Rays have have unearthed some things from the experience with the bigger bases in the pitch clock and scouting. Uh, although you do have some tough catching competition in this division as well, particularly with the Orioles and Blue Jays. But and, and with you know, I, I think this is a year to you know test some things out. You know, just just run wild if. Um, if uh, you're not going to be able to, to score in other ways, you got to get a little bit creative with uh, some of these young players. So um, I think uh, I think we both have two. Uh, uh, no, I think we both have one bad bet. Yeah, so far, and this is yours, and mine was this the innings bad one. bet. Yeah, but I'm my, rooting for it. my bad one was the innings one, but I'm I'm rooting for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Next one. Next one. Next one. Okay. Jason Adam over under 11.5 saves over under 11.5. Um, I will say under. Why? I think uh, he took a, a step back last season in comparison to his 2022. Um and I don't know if he gets back to that 2022 campaign. And I also think you have some other potential options with Colin Pochet and maybe Phil Maton and others. And this kind of ties into my next prop bet. I'm expecting a, a healthier and more prolific Pete Fairbanks. So uh, that is why I am going under. I'm not saying that Jason Adams is going to have two saves, but I could see uh, single digits or you know, 9, 10, 11, something like that. Well, he had 12 last year, so that's why I put it at 11.5. Okay. Uh, but I agree. I don't think he's going to to get to 12 because I'm expecting Pete Fairbanks to go off. Like this is the year that we need we need Pete Fairbanks to really cement himself. And I know people know of him, but I I need him to show the kind of stuff that will make him top three top five reliever in all of baseball because he has the talent to do so. So let's actually 
see it. So I'm yeah. rooting for that. So yeah, I'm I'm going under on and Jason Adam. Maybe maybe uh, again, I don't think the Rays would do this, but if they really wanted to say, hey, we're going to put you in the doghouse, you you went to arbitration against us, you made us do all this work, <laughs> we're not giving you many save opportunities this year, and he is getting a little bit longer in the tooth at 35 years old. So yeah. uh, those are just a, a couple of reasonings there. Um, okay. So, and we'll get to the Fairbanks one. Um, but before that, um, actually, no, yeah, that is my, my next one here. Do you have any more after this? Or is that I have one more. Okay. So I'll, I'll give my uh, Pete Fairbanks one and then you can, uh, can wrap it up there. Um, so piggybacking off of uh, Jason Adam, Pete Fairbanks, over under 28 and a half saves this season. He had 25 last year. I just made my argument. I'm expecting him to have the 2024 boom season to sedimentate himself as well, the top three, top five reliever in all of baseball. Um, and that means being healthy. That means getting the saves. And that means being in a good team to have the opportunities to have saves. And not only a good team, but a team that plays close games. That is literally what the Rays are. So I will go and say, yes, he will go over 28.5. I will go over as well. Now, do you think he gets to 30? Yeah, I don't okay. see that as crazy. Yeah. All right. Uh, I will agree with you here so we can, I mean, we'll put it on the list, but it won't contribute to our um, determination on whether you get uh, some daddy sodas or I get a box of cigars or a, a ticket to a Rays game. But uh, he had 25 saves and 45 innings last year. All I'm asking from Pete Fairbanks is one less injury this yeah. season. Okay. You had the left hip inflammation. You had the right forearm near the wrist last year. Probably had something else going on, pitching in cold weather, whatever it is. Just like one less injured list stint. You know, take a five-day injured list stint off or whatever it is. Or just get to like 51, 52 innings, and I think you're pretty much there. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Which I think is not that crazy. But, again, it is it is. Pete Fairbanks, he does throw the the ninety nine mile per hour fastball and the eighty seven mile per hour slider, but I have faith uh, that he can get over the hump here. And it is, and it is the race, so they might they might tread lightly with him. Um, yeah, and I mean, this is also this is the race, and um, this may be more on Jason Adam than Pete Fairbanks, but there have been years where like ten eleven guys get saves. Yeah, like, that's just how it how it happens sometimes. Could be. Last but not least, Kevin Cash had three ejections last year. Over under 3.5 ejections in 2024. I'm going to go over for sure. Uh, you have a young team. Uh, there's going to be a lot of frustration. There's not going to be a 13-0 and season, although the Rays did have a, a month where it was like their worst month in franchise history last year, I think, in June or July, something like that. Yeah, July. Uh, but I think there will be a lot of trying times, growing pains, some slumps, and I think there'll be a couple moments where Cash just wants to light fire in the belly of some of these players, and uh, I think that's going to endear itself uh, into some eject ejections there. Um, and you know, maybe he has to you know cut, coach his son's little league ball game and get out of uh, get out of the situation early. So I could see some you know. Sunday ejection, spend Sunday with the family or whatever it is. But uh, I'm going to go over on that marker um, because, uh, man, you've got some, you've got a lot of new faces. Uh, and I think that um, there's going to be some difficult moments here and there. That's a fair argument. I'm going to go under. And I okay. will say because if you look at his last three years, 2021, zero ejections. Um, that was surprising. Uh, 2022, he had two ejections and 2023, like I said, three ejections. So he's not a guy that's, that is all up in every, anybody's face. I understand the, the young, um, player argument, but I will also flip the young player argument. He doesn't want young players to be in their emotions so much. And he has to lead by example. So That's he fair. has to kind of not show that 
emotion and, and be a little bit more stoic. Uh, and also, he is now the old, the oldest or longest tenured manager with his current team. That's unreal. Like he's the guy now in the managers, I, at least in the American League. Like he's the guy. He's I, I, the longest. So I feel like there's also comes a, a little sense of gravitas with that and so i'm gonna go under i don't think he's gonna get into okay. many two tuffles and this might be like my, my my one of my hottie base baseball takes i love seeing managers get ejected you will not oh, however gosh. many analytics you want to throw at me or whatever uh, it doesn't work i love it i'm a sucker for it, it. it probably prevented uh, lou Pinella from getting in the hall of fame but that's what we remember like it's uh I love it. it's memorable it's it's historic it's it's something that you can talk about yeah you know what it is it's it's i'm a fan i'm invested in this team i'm watching 162 plus games i'm invested i need you i need to know that you're invested and of course that we know that but yeah. the extra showing of that it's nice for the fan at yeah. least for to, to some of us no that's fair so um with these a uh, handful or so of prop bets. We disagree on. I have to look at this again. Uh, we at disagree the on one? race starters. We disagree on stolen bases. Mm -hmm. We disagree on ejections. Mm -hmm. And anything else? We disagree, or just those three. And, and Randy was ran a home oh, run. Randy. Okay, so that's four thus far. Yeah. So we have uh, a lot more prop bets we're going to have to get through over the course of this. And you know what? If you have ideas for prop bets that we can include into our Google Doc, guess what? There's the comments. Utilize that, that comment box. And guess what? Your prop bet will make it onto the show and will make it into the Google Doc if it's yeah. really, really good. Yeah. You can you can hit us a comment in the uh, in the YouTubes or uh, email us a prop bet idea because we will bring it up on the show. Uh, all right. In the meantime, hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe. And we will talk to you tomorrow.